Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Okay, go. so let me let me share my screen. One sec. Will be it. So is that is that working? Yes, perfect. Oh, take it away. Okay, so uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, to this workshop. Uh, I, I wish it, I wish it could be down there in Australia, but uh, well, <laughs> we know what's going on. So uh, I think for next time we'll, it, we, it will be. So I'm going to talk to you. Uh, it, I mean, it, it will it will resonate a lot of things that Chang Song uh, Chang Song said in in, in the in two talks uh, ago. Uh, but we are different point of view, maybe. Uh, we are also exploring how dynamical richness appears from uh, fixed connectomes, or from the connectome in, in general, from the human connectome. And um, oh, first, I uh, from from time from some time uh, ago, I started to prefer to thank people and show my, my, my work group at the beginning. So this is the people that did the work. This is an old picture, actually. Some people, it's not, it's not really, it's not here now and, and it changed. But uh, yeah, we haven't had the chance to take a new photo. And I don't like this uh, Zoom uh, photo. Maybe, maybe I, will, I will do that. Uh, most of what I'm going to talk about, uh, to, uh, what I'm going to talk today is, is, is done by these people here. And I will I will be pointing them uh, in in time, and um, well, the collaborators, and I have to thank all the, the the funding that we have. And this is our group, Vandal. Um, so, uh, well, the, my point of view in 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 terms of the of the dynamical richness in the brain comes from the resting state or spontaneous activity that you can, that it has been measured from, from a long time since, uh, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years, I don't, I don't remember. Uh, when, and we know people have described a lot of uh, fluctuations from in EEG, how it, it, it evolves. Uh, this is in, in the absence of any stimuli. So uh, in the resting state, the brain is doing anything but, but, but resting. So that we have uh, uh, sudden changes in the fluctuations. Uh, I mean, sudden fluctuations in the alpha uh, band power. You have the EEG also microstates, and then in fMRI, you have the, the the dynamics of functional connectivity that show how the the brain is con continuously reorganizing, and uh, you can also see this kind of uh, meta stable or multi-stable, depends on how you look at it, uh, behavior. And um, in, the, in the small circuits, this is uh, some antenna love as a locus brain. Um, yeah, but it's, this is doing some task. But in, anyway, it, it shows how the, the, the activity of a small microcircuit of, of neurons uh, is uh, continuously evolving in, 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 in different, uh, I mean, being attracted by some metastable attractors and, and then going, going away from, from there. So it's not a feature of the, of the whole brain at all. Um, and I'm, I'm going to focus on, on, on this continuously evolving pattern of a correlation between different brain areas. I mean, the, the correlations that you measure, if you look at them in, 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 in in a sliding winner approach, which is the most simple uh, way of looking at it, it's changing. So you see different subnetworks that 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 uh, engage in or in correlation. If you're, if you're talking about the fMRI or in phase synchrony, if you're talking about uh, uh, EEG. Now, this multi-stability or metastability depends again how you look at it. I'm not going to go to, to put much effort into explaining that. Uh, this would allow the system to explore a large number of state configurations, and this uh, it, it should, should be related to many things, among others, efficient coding of the ever-changing surrounding environment or dealing with sensory novelty. And there's a lot of literature about that. And I think, yeah, I'm missing some uh, very, uh, very new, uh, newer ones that, that are all the time. Uh, we have more and more evidence or, or, or thoughts about how this is important for the function of the brain. I'm going to focus on, on, on the functional connectivity dynamics, uh, which is uh, this uh, thing that uh, many people have measured and reproduced in, in models. 
And um, our take in, in, in the lab is, is uh, with this and many other things that happen in the brain, is how does it do it? That's that's our question. We don't we don't we are not um, we, we are not putting much effort. We are putting some, but not much effort, and uh, trying to characterize this in, in 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 experimental recordings. But rather, we try to see how uh, what are the boundaries of a numerical model, a biophysical inspired model, um, to 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 reproduce this kind of dynamical richness. I'm going to, okay, so this is a very, very short, uh, I'm going to go over this again, but you have uh, the fMRI recordings of many brain areas, and then you characterize the correlation between them. And if you do it in different time uh, periods or time windows of the recording, you see that this correlation go evolving. And then the, 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 how much they evolve and whether the, the, the different patterns revisit uh, each other in, in time. You can see this in this uh, functional connectivity dynamics matrix, which is nothing more than the correlation between the correlations or the correlation between the different uh, time windows that you measured um, here. Now, uh, I'm going to give you like three uh, different or new messages that we have found about this. So the first is about that no dynamics. This is, uh, I think, uh, yeah, if, if you attended the uh, CNS last year, maybe you hear that. Uh, I'm going to to recapitulate very, very quickly what what, what is this about. And the, I, I, you, I, I want to, to tell you about this because this is the reason why we are using a model has, that has nothing to do with large scale uh, brain dynamics. It's a model about an oscillatory neuron. I came to this model working in a completely different field, but then it, it, it made me wonder, and because of this, uh, so the, the thing is, this model is an uh, oscillatory neuron. Um, it is related or inspired in the, in, the, in the firing of cold temp receptors in our skin and, and peripheral uh, uh, organs. And uh, the, the thing is that it's a, it's a, it's a it's a generic, think of it as a generic uh, neural oscillator. And the, the, the important thing, what, what, make me, make, what made me take this model for a couple of questions in, in, in this field, is that um, it can be, it can have a regular, very regular behavior or a irregular chaotic behavior. And in, and, and in this paper here, uh, we characterize the, the chaos and how the chaos emerges and, and, and so on. So we have a map for uh, the parameters of the model, and uh, we know in which uh, places of the of the parameter space this uh, the, the isolated node. With that, that's the important thing. The isolated node can have a, a irregular behavior or a more regular behavior, which is uh, shown here. So we can build now a, a network that has either chaotic guys or non-chaotic uh, guys, uh, oscillators. Important thing is that both networks are heterogeneous. So uh, in, in, both, in both situations, uh, each isolated node can have a, 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 I mean, not can have, has a different preferred firing frequency or uh, oscillatory frequency. And, um, Moreover, although the, the model has spikes in, 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 this, uh, in, in the time trace, in the voltage trace, we only focus on the sub-threshold oscillatory. So we, we filter, uh, we, we apply a low-pass filter of, of 50 hertz, and we look at the, at the slow oscillations there, which are more in the range of the oscillations in the, in the in large-scale oscillations in the brain. So we sweep the, the, the coupling in, the, in this, in this um, in these networks, starting from a completely isolated uh, node, so uncoupled, where you see a completely asynchronous uh, behavior, and then we go uh, to the completely synchronous uh, situation and see what happens in the middle. Uh, the same again. So, so this is the. At first, we thought that the the guy that, that the networks with chaotic behavior would show a, a completely different uh, synchronization curve, but it doesn't look much different. Although the, we 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 do observe some uh, uh, higher higher metastability, so there is some 
some of the of the of the of the chaotic nature of the of the isolated oscillators uh, percolates, so to speak, to the to the behavior of the network. So there is some some effect there, but it's it's not really a big one. But okay, let let's forget about that. Uh, but we 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 went to see what happens with the functional connectivity dynamics, and as I showed you before, uh, uh, we do this we do this uh, this very similar way. Uh, as the people do it in fMRI recordings, although with a slight difference, because now we have a strongly oscillating signals. So we have uh, the voltage trace, as I, as I said, is low pass filter. We uh, divided it in, in, in many um, uh, windows. And for each window, we calculate the pairwise uh, phase synchrony. Yeah, that this is pairwise. So we apply the Kuramoto order parameter, but in pairs. So we have an entry for each pair of uh, oscillators. You already can see that the patterns of, of, of synchrony uh, change in time. And interesting thing, this is a, a completely deterministic simulation. So uh, this is uh, to show that the, in this case, the behavior is arising because of the model being uh, chaotic. And now we compare them with some, in this case, is uh, just an angular distance. I mean, we, 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 we make, we make, we treat this matrices as a vector, and then we calculate the angular distance between them. And we obtain this matrix uh, of, of functional connectivity dynamics. Um, and we can have several, several situations. For instance, if the network is highly synchronized, we observe only we would observe only one pattern of synchronization here that happens to be everybody synchronized with everybody but doesn't have to be the case the most important thing that this matrix is, is, is saying here is that the synchrony pattern whatever it is is not changing in time this is this is this is what you see when when this matrix here is completely blue as here if uh, the, there is uh, nobody is connected then you see that the, the, the synchronization patterns uh, change all the time. They never repeat. And in the middle, you see the interesting situations because uh, you see um, th that uh, some patterns, for instance, here uh, stay for a while. This is a, a, a long uh, a stretch of time where the same pattern or very similar with a very low distance repeated for some time and then another another time and then other patterns and so on so the more patchy you see this uh, this matrix here you 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 see that the first the patterns of synchrony are evolving in time and second the, these patterns are not uh, wandering widely in time but they are repeating there are things that repeat and and and, and, and go away and then other come again so um here um, below you see uh, an histogram of the values that you find in the in the in the in the lower triangle of this matrix, and you see that in the both non-interesting cases uh, here, this connection on here, complete synchrony, uh, the variance in the in the in the in the histogram is zero. So we take the variance of the values of the CD matrix as an indicator, as a proxy, as a rough measure of the dynamical diversity or the dynamical richness that we see in the, in the network. So long story short, what happens uh, when the networks are composed of chaos, chaotic nodes? We see some variability at some values. This is G, this is the, the connectivity strength, so to speak. And we see some uh, uh, values of, 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 of G at which we, we observe dynamical richness in the way we are uh, measuring it. Uh, with non-chaotic nodes, we also see it, but we see a little less. And um, this is uh, 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 the, the, the plot of the variance, the CD variance, and, and you see that the orange curve is not much lower, but it is it is narrower than in the case of the chaotic uh, oscillators. And this is a measure that we did, that's measuring the, the clusters that we find in the, in, the, in the FC matrices, individual FC matrices. This is just another set of data that shows roughly the same. And then we added some noise because I told you that the, the simulations were uh, deterministic. 
And um, interestingly, there is some level of noise in which you see an increase on the variance of the FCD matrices. And secondly, with the, in the case of the non-chaotic oscillators, uh, we can see some situations, for instance, here, where a deterministic situation with deterministic simulation, the black trace has no FCD variance, no dynamical richness, probably is this case here. And then we add some uh, noise and we see uh, an increase in the, in the uh, dynamical richness. So here we see a clear case where noise can induce a dynamical richness, but for some reason it doesn't happen here. Maybe the, the, the chaotic nature of the oscillators is already taking care of that. But then we went to, to, to the network topology. What can, what can we say about the, the topology of the network and, and regarding this, uh, how can it help to, to or not to, to have a dynamical richness? And we started with a very uh, simple uh, question, which is going from regular networks to completely random networks, uh, you know, uh, with, with the small world networks in the middle, um, in a, in a continuum between integration and segregation of the of the nodes of, of the network. And uh, this is the, the, the work of Javier Palma. Um, he tested very, I mean, several networks here uh, with different, so this is a typical watts strogat uh, algorithm for, for, for doing uh, small world networks, but if with a rewiring probability of zero, so I mean, you start with a lattice with a rewiring probability of zero, you have just a lattice. Um, and then if you have a rewiring probability of one, you have a complete random network. But with some uh, low, um, actually around here, you obtain what is uh, typically measured with these indices as a uh, small wellness. And we have a, comp uh, a whole discussion and we have this, we discovered things that happen with these measures of, of small wellness uh, when you are dealing with not, not so large uh, networks a few hundred, apparently it's not so large. And something happens uh, with this measure, they are not very consistent and we have to take care of that. So we're, we're taking omega as a index of, of small wellness. And the closer, what, what we like about, what we like about omega is that uh, omega when it's negative, it tells you about a regular network. When it's positive, it says that you have a random network and when you're close to zero, you have a small world network. So it, it, may, it allows you to, to, to differentiate the three cases. So first the ex extremes, and this may not surprise you, when you have a completely random network, uh, you, we don't observe at all any very nice, uh, this, is, this is noise. Uh, and this is the inverse of noise because we, are, we, we with noise uh, as number of, I mean, this as, as uh, it has to do with the number of ion channels that you have. So the less channels you have, the more noise you have. So here down is the noise shear situation. And here is the coupling. And uh, yeah, with the random network, we don't see much, maybe here something, uh, but this is too noisy to be, to be, uh, to be excited about that. Uh, however, in the regular network, the completely completely segregated network, we um, see a lot of uh, FCD matrices with uh, patches that tell you about uh, um, dynamical richness. So that's how we want to interpret it. And uh, this is just more result uh, going from the, the regular network with zero rewiring probability to completely to one probability of one of rewiring and this is the variance of the FCD matrix and as you see uh, the, 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 the the dynamical richness here goes to the goes to the to the floor I mean it's completely at zero uh, but then we wanted to measure or to try to correlate this to several um, uh, topological measures about segregation integration. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here, this is 2%, 4%, 8% is the, is the density of, of connectivity in the network. How, uh, how, many, how many connections uh, um, are in the network being 100% uh, the fully connected network? Um, 
we don't go above uh, eight or ten percent because over that everything start looking like random um or looking like uh, everybody to everybody connected so uh, so here just uh quickly uh, show this this is q the modularity okay so this is this, the small world index and uh actually the the highest uh Variance of the FCD always is not observed in the in the in the small world uh, range of this uh, for this index is observed in the regular network or the more segregated network. The same with the modularity. You have the highest variance of the FCD. The more modular the network is, is. and efficiency. This is a, a measure of integration. So if you have a more integrated network, then you have a lower again. Uh, variance of the FCD. So segregation promotes a dynamical richness, not integration, which is kind of obvious, but the, this is a just, a, it's interesting to show it in a very, in a mass purely uh, 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 simulation setting. Oh, and we also work with modular networks. This is the work of Seftan and uh, 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 most, I mean, uh, uh, the, we find mostly the same. The mo most integrated network have have less segregation. So this made us wonder: what about the integration segregation balance in the net in the in the, in the brain? Because um, we know that the brain uh, can switch uh, in the in the functional connectivity uh, between uh, a more integrated or a more segregated state, and even though the the the, the the structural connectivity, the the hardwiring of the of the of the brain doesn't change much uh, in in that time scale, and um, there is a whole uh, framework proposed uh, a couple of years ago, or last year, by uh, James Machine, and um, that he proposed that well, this is not only him, but that he made a, a nice point with a, with a, with a mathematical model. How the cholinergic system and the noradrenergic system they both together um, uh, work together to 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 make this balance. And although in this figure the cholinergic system is mostly associated to segregation, uh, the noradrenergic system with integration, uh, actually it's the, the, the combination of, of the two that uh, really makes the, the the job. And I'm going to show you that. Uh, in a, in a couple of the slides, also is a, is a, the same message of this paper in in, in 2018. So, uh, what? How do, did we do it? Uh, we use um, Janssen and Reed uh, model for uh, a, a brain union activity, and um, in this model you have uh, pyramidal neurons and uh, the voltage uh, is converted into firing rate and then the firing rate is converted into the voltage the post postsynaptic voltage that we go to either excitatory interneurons or in inhibitory interneurons and 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 the same again from in, in from the neurons uh, you have the voltage you have firing rate and then this goes to a postsynaptic pot uh, potential that go to pyramidal neurons and um this is one column. This is one brain area. We have many brain areas connected by uh, empirical uh, structural connectivity. And there's also a matrix of some time, time delays. And so we have this uh, whole uh, whole brain neural mass model. And uh, the neuromodulation for by the noradrenergic or cholinergic uh, circuits is represented here in this alpha and beta for the case of the cholinergic. And there are two ways, this very well documented, actually many ways, that's how a uh, cholinergic system acts, but we, this is uh, probably the most, the two most important or that has got more attention. One is the, is that increases the gain of the, um, of how each column senses the input from other columns. And uh, there is another one, this is another one that we included that is not present in previous model, in previous models nor in the in the in the work by by James Machin here uh, this uh, the gain of the connection between inhibitory interneurons to excitatory interneurons that this this loop if you think about it uh, makes kind of a, a homeostatic um, influence 
uh, within the, the, the brain area. But it is known that cholinergic, uh, the, the cholinergic system also can modulate this, this, this connection here. And, and we, we will play with these parameters alpha and beta. And there is another parameter, R0, uh, which is the slope of this relationship here from the voltage of the pyramidal neurons to the firing rate. That uh, is the, the, the role of the neuroadrenergic system. But, okay, so Carlos Coronel had a poster yesterday, but he did a, a, he showed a lot of, of nice results about the neuromodulations and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I'm not going to go into that in detail now. We are, we are just about to submit a manuscript. The, the, the one important thing is that the inhibitory gain is needed to observe the, the transition between segregation and integration. So without this, uh, this V that, that we added here, uh, we don't reproduce uh, the, the previous result or the whole observations, uh, experimental observations. But why am, am I showing you this? Because we also measure the variance of the FCD in this setting. And, uh, and here we do it in the, in the, in the, in the vault-like generated signal that that the, that the model uh, reproduces because we can, we can do it. And uh, we also see a region where we have a maximum variance of TSCD that we interpret as a dynamical richness. And this coincides with the boundary between, uh, this is uh, efficiency, which is integration, be the boundary between no integration and integration, but also happens in the boundary between no synchrony and synchrony. So in this sweet spot, we have the maximum of the variance of the of the FCD also. So the, the bottom line is that we have a model where now the, the integration and segregation is not balanced. The integration and segregation balance is not due to the to the connectivity matrix. The connectivity matrix is the same. Integration is, and segregation is being uh, tuned by a neuromodulation uh, system. And we observe the same, that uh, when you have full integration here, you have low uh, variance of TFCD. When you have no integration also, nothing happens. But in the middle, in the transition, in the transition uh, 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 limit between no integration and integration, you have uh, more, more uh, variance of TFCD. Uh, I think I'm going to stop here. So this is the, this is the conclusions. So we have I have shown you how segregated connectomes are more easily associated with dynamical uh, functional connectivity because an integrated connectivity uh, results in synchronization. And um, manipulation of functional segregation integration also results in changes of SCD. So in the first part of the talk, I show you how we manipulated the integration of the, in the network in the structural sense. But then if you manipulate the inter integration segregation in the functional, uh, uh, activity of the of the network with the structural connectivity uh, fixed, you also uh, change the the dynamical uh, functional connectivity that you observe. So yeah, I will I will skip this and and, and leave this for another uh, opportunity. The part of it's a very short study, also being published now. You can you can look at it in in, in plus computational physiology uh, about the the a dynamical model of the with the human connectome too. But I think I have to stop. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Love it. Nice talk. Uh, quick. We've got one so question and we've got time for about one question. So. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll stop. Uh, so Shrey asks, uh, why do you choose more noise when the conductance is low? What is being modeled by the noise? I'm sorry, yes, no, because this is a biophysical model of, of, of single neuron activity, so it's, you have ion channels. Now, uh, one source of, of noise in, 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 in neurons, in neuron models, is the spontaneous uh, opening and closing of ion channels. The more channels you have, the less noise you observe, because uh, then everything, everything converges to the mean. But if you have less channel, you have a more random activity or more uh, more deviation from the mean or from the expectation so uh, the number that I put in the in the in the in the in the figures is the area of the neuron what we are simulating doesn't have much uh, physical meaning in, in some in, in some in a way although it's 
pretty much uh, 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 plausible. But the, the idea is that the larger the area, you have more channels, and the more channels you have, uh, you have a you you have a you approach the large number limit of the activity. You approach the expectation of the activity of a, a big population of channels. Cool. Uh, well, thanks How very much, Patricia. <laughs> uh, 